What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 49 of On Shape. Uh, we're going to continue on for gears for uh, a little bit, actually, and kind of seeing how far we can run with it before we get just a little too crazy. Um, what we're going to do specifically is we're going to take our one-to-one -one gear system. We now know how to do that. Okay, how then do I repeat those gear profiles to allow me to do either step up or step down gears or, and then also look into a little bit of gear to gear ratios. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to look at the geometry we used for one of our gear teeth and then repeat that geometry. So we can't just willy nilly throw in <clears throat> these gear shapes, what we have to do is we have to model the gears in such a way where each teeth is uh, specifics to the, the dimensions we give it. And so I just did with a simple triangle toothed gear. Um, those actually aren't very efficient. Um, more of that, you know, rounded off beveled shape will be much better. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity, we are just doing this triangle tooth. So what I'm gonna do then is take some notes of my triangle tooth. So I've got one fully dimensioned tooth on my gear and everything is gonna be based off of that one tooth. So here's what I have. I have that uh, my system right here has an equal lateral triangle and I know this dimension is 0.390417. I'm not even gonna memorize that. I'm just gonna hit control C and we're gonna copy it. We're gonna hit the green check mark, and then we know everything I'm gonna do now is gonna be based off that one tooth. So what I'm gonna do is make this part disappear, okay? Along with that sketch, we're gonna click on sketch, and uh, let's go ahead and turn a new sketch on this plane. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a 10 toothed gear. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing we did with the other one. We're gonna do a circumscribed polygon, and it doesn't really matter the dimension of it. We want to get the number of sides right. And then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make one of my teeth. So let's go ahead and make a triangle here. Let's go ahead and dimension it to be the specific dimensions of that one tooth. So I just pasted that value in there, hit the equal sign for me. And what that did is it automatically scaled the gear to the diameter size it would need to be for a 10 tooth gear. All we need to do now though is to make sure that the shape is the same is make an equilateral because I'm having a triangle toothed gear. If you're doing another rounded off shape, all you have to do is make sure this dimension is the same and then copy and paste that geometry in there as well. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a circular pattern and I'm gonna repeat this geometry in that circle 10 times. Check mark, and we're already cooking with grease. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and extrude now. Just that whole face. Let's go the other direction with it, and let's uh, click in that inner circle. That way we still have our, our axle hole there. Okay, I'm gonna hit the check mark, and oh, Let's make this a new rather than add. There we go. That way my axle is still my axle. Okay. Since uh, we are doing some different gears, I'm gonna go ahead and name this as 20 tooth. And then <clears throat> let's rename this as 10 tooth. And then we have our axle. There you go, clicking too many things at once. Rename, we got axle. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and on the front of this gear, just so for the sake of me and for the sake of you guys be able to follow along, I'm going to also going to go ahead and put on just a sign to show us how many teeth are on this gear. I can't tell you how many times I've had to count a gear out just because I don't know what it is and then I get lost about halfway around. So, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take this, make it a remove. And let's do a dis distance of a half inch. That way I don't have to worry about that, this little inside part uh, of my tin. 
Okay, we've made our tin toothed gear. We're looking good. All we need to do now is I'll make this disappear. Let's make our 30 toothed gear. Let's make a big boy. So I'm going to hit sketch, this front plane, right click, hit view normal 2 again. And you could actually do this with any number of teeth. So if you're, you don't have to do the multiples of, of the tooth you're dealing with. And so all you have to do is as many sides to your polygon as you want. And we're going to do, we're going to shoot for 30. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to find one tooth. We're going to finish this tooth off. Go ahead and hit the equal sign. We want all this to be an equal lateral triangle. And we want the dimension of this to be that value we have saved. There we go. Go ahead and hit that circular pattern. Throw this in a circle 30 times. I have noticed a little bit, and I think this is just due to the rendering of my computer. If you know different, let me know. But um, my computer's uh, GPU isn't quite catching up with me, and so sometimes I get these preview errors. And so what I've got going on then is I'm just going to believe it's going to work, hit the check mark, and we're good to go. Go ahead and extrude this on out. We're going to do a new part here. Everything except for the middle and hit the check mark and we're looking good. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is on this, throw in a little bit of a nameplate on it so we know how many teeth are on this gear. So let's do 30, make it bold, and then go ahead and extrude this on out as a remove with a half inch. Okay, so here's what I got so far, is I have my three gears made. We know our axles are all going to be the same, and so all we need to do now is throw this in a assembly. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did yesterday. However, we're going to uh, do just a little bit different when it comes to our distances for one of our mates and our gear relationship. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just move the pieces out of the, out of the way as I don't need them all. Okay. And I'm gonna start with my tin tooth gear here on the left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just find it, right click it and fix it. We don't want it to move. Do a fasten mate here. So between these two axles, I don't know what that distance is going to be. We can find it, um, but for now, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, that offset to be, let's go and call it just 1.5 inches. Um, looks like I'm going to be going the negative direction, because I want to go to the right. Okay, and let's just go ahead and throw in a revolute. You know, the center of this is going to be revoluting around the center of that. Hit the play, and there we go. It is spinning as expected. And what I already see that these are going to be way too close, but let's go ahead and throw in this mate connector as we need. Okay. I'm going to go back to my fasten. Let's go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger. No, 2.25. Ooh, really close. I'm just going to see if I can get away with just 2.2. Be helpful if I didn't click the exit there. Okay. Alrighty. Hit the green check mark, and that looks pretty daggone close. Alright. Now, is this spinning? Absolutely, this is spinning as expected. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and throw in our fasten mate. We want this to be fastened with this. Now, here's one thing I found a lot of problems is that sometimes this part just gets in my way. So I don't like it. Say so disappear, get out of my face for now. That way I know I'm clicking on the right part. Uh, when I was watching my students make this, very often when they were doing the fasten mates with the axles, they would accidentally click on a gear. And so if you know it's not, if you know it's gonna be in your way, just go ahead and make it inactive, get out of your way, and you're good to go. Okay, this offset's going to be somewhere in the realm of, I believe about three and a half inches. Hit the green check mark and we're good to go. Revolute this around the center of that. 
hit the check mark, and this revolutes as expected. Okay, the only thing we need to do now is we need to fix our gear ratios, well, and also put them in. So what we know is about this gear relationship between our first and second gear is going to be a one to two ratio, or 10 to 20, which simplifies as one to two. So you can just type in one over two, or you can type in the decimal value it is. So we know is that when this wheel on the left, or this gear on the left goes around one whole time, that my gear on the right is gonna go around just a half. Or you can look at it this way, if the 22th gear is gonna go around one time, the other gear is gonna go around twice. Okay, everything there looks kind of good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and fix this 32th gear while we're at it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on gear. We're gonna go between the second gear and the third gear. It is now a 20 to 30. So you can type in a two over three or 20 over 30. And everything kind of moves as expected. There's a little bit of tweaking we can do. So let's go ahead and do that. We can see that we got a little bit of interference over here. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna take that fasten mate and 2.25 was too much, so let's just gonna bump it up just a few degrees. There you go. It kind of works as expected. Okay. You felt welcome to tweak it and you know change it a little bit more as you'd like. I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring that on back because I think it just looked a little bit better here with a small bit of overlap. Okay, <clears throat> and the next thing we gotta do is fix this one. So go to my other fasten, edit, and like makes this 3.455. Just the smallest amount of change. There we go. And we are cooking with grease. Everything seems to work as expected. There's a couple things in here I'm also going to mention, <clears throat> just in case you missed it in the last video and it didn't pop up here, is if your gears aren't rotating the way you expect them to, you might need to hit this reverse direction, especially if you put one gear in with the front face and then the other gear in with the back facing. You might have to uh, flip one of those gears and do reverse direction. The other thing you have to do, maybe potentially, is adjust the gear to be tweaked just a few degrees. So if we find out that if the spacing was right, but for example, one was just still eating into it or the gears weren't matching as we'd expect, you might have to put in just a small edit on that mate. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. We can go ahead and start spinning like crazy. However, we run into a little bit of a problem is that, man, it's just, it looks really nice and neat in this state. So before I start cranking like crazy, let's go ahead and name this position. We're just going to call this position upright. And what this does for me is that when I start spinning this thing like crazy to show my students what gear ratios look like or what we're doing in class, I, I don't want to have to undo as many rotations as I did. So we can just click on dis display states again. Select a position, upright, there we go. And we're back to the way we expected. Alrighty, well there you go guys. We made officially a step up, a step down gear system. And what we're gonna do is eventually look into some compound gears and some other types of gears. But I'm really excited for uh, what we got in store here. Okay guys, if this video has been helpful, please, please, please throw down in the comment section saying hey, this is a lifesaver, uh, or B, this is really, really, really cool and uh, uh, something I can deal with. Or um, if you have any comments or concerns or if I did something wrong, feel free absolutely to reach out to me however you want. If these videos have been helpful for you, absolutely please subscribe. It is tons of fun, and I'm looking forward to the machinery uh, and the gearbox assemblies that we're making soon downstream. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Take care.